So the discussion points is one is we'll talk about the art and science of photography. The second is we'll I'll tell you about the top seven factors which I think will play a vital role in making better bird photographs. Then I'll showcase a few of my photographs and then I'll take the question and answers. Hopefully all these things will be done uh, within the time uh, which has been given. I'm assuming it is around 40, 45 minutes. Uh, we'll see, I'll take the questions on the fly, if anybody is interested to ask, I do not mind. Okay. So, the art and science of bird photography. So, the first is let's see science. So, what is the science behind uh, bird photography, or in particular, regarding photography? Whatever I'm speaking now is pretty much applicable for all sorts of photography, right? One is settings. So, probably the most interesting thing for all the bird photographers. <laughs> Is settings so obviously we need settings but why do we need settings what are we trying to do by using the settings we are trying to get an exposure which is which is where we are making the image right so the entire science if you put it together in a very simplistic manner all that we are trying to do is get an exposure all the things whether you are using the camera the lens the tripod or the filter or anything you do any number of settings you change whatever you do at the end of the day the entire science of photography is just helping you to get one exposure. That's all the science of, of photography is. But majority of the photographers are spending their time in the science, uh, which is what I'm talking about today. This is what I'm trying to tell you, will tell you as to why we need to go beyond the science within the time constraint, of course. Then the sharpness being probably for the bird photographer, the number one question they want is the number one issue they have is sharpness. So they always has the same thing, sharpness, sharpness, sharpness. But it's also part of the science. And if you get the right exposure, it's pretty evident that you need to have the sharpness. Otherwise, there is no photograph at all. But just to keep it simple and cover the things which most of the people want to know, that's the settings, exposure, and sharpness. We are not going to cover these ones, but that's where the science of photography is, right? When we come to the art, we have light and composition. That's a known factor for everybody and probably so well known that most often people fail to do that, light and composition. Most often people fail to even remember that what makes a photograph is light and composition. So we are going to talk about the art, but we are not specifically going to talk about light and composition, but I'm going to talk about all in inclusive in a very simplistic manner to make a better photograph. But before we even go and talk about any of the things which I want to talk today, the question to all of you is what's more important, the art or the science? So you can answer. Uh, so, if anybody wants to answer, both uh, I suppose. Both I suppose. Definitely, <laughs> art only. Art stands. The art, both. Say any other answer. Both are important. Both are important. Yes. Art that is achieved with uh, perfect science. Oh. Okay, so yes, the answer is yes. Both are important because you need science to make art, basically, right? You need the exposure setting, sharpness, all these things coming together to make the art. But if you truly dig deeper and then say, what is the most important of all these two? If you have to debate and then talk about these two. Art is a different shatter. Art is a different shatter. Different? Differentiator in a photograph. Now, five persons can do same click, same spot, same gadget. Ah. But you know, the art point of view let's say, make the a particular photograph uh, stand out in my Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So yeah, let's not even go there. Okay, let's only talk about the light and composition as the art of photography and the science being this exposure, making of the exposure, right? So though it is debatable, what I'm talking about 
is debatable and whatever i talk about throughout this session is all debatable so don't think that this is kind of written on stone or whatever i'm saying is the correct one obviously it is not going to be the correct because everybody has a different opinion about the subject so i am only talking from my experience are you from nice background so the if you look at it suppose you are very good in science in the sense you are very good in making exposure you are the top class photographer in terms of using the equipment getting the right settings getting the perfect sharpness because sharpness basically as i see from my 7 8 years of teaching people are so mad about sharpness for whatever reason <laughs> okay they want sharpness first more than anything that's okay you are given that you are too good in all those things right so the best of the best exposure and the best sharp sharpness which you can get right and perfect settings whatever you want to say as perfect right will not make a good photograph at the end of the day agree so it doesn't translate to a good photograph it will translate to a very sharp photograph yes very good exposure yes right so you have nailed the settings yes but unless the photograph is good it has no point of all no point at all and if you dig deeper starting today if you have not done so and look at thousands and thousands of photographs which are coming in and most of the people who are even making youtube videos and several people who are writing blogs also they give so much of attention on these settings and probably the advanced settings and the advanced advanced settings which manufacturers are just pushing with every new camera all the talk and the debate is going around these settings going around this equipment going around making a sharp picture and all these things right so if you look at those photographs you can easily make out that the photograph itself is not good what's the point in doing all the other things there is usually no point once you come to a level of understanding you will start to see that those things are really not making any sense but let's flip it for a for a moment let's flip it so you are too good in art basically it's light and composition right we are all visual people why do we love love photography we look at something it's beautiful we just want to capture it using the tool or camera and the lens that's all we are doing basically photography is the easiest of all compared to any art compared to anything in life it's the easiest we have seen it we love it we take it that's about it but such a big mess we have made out of photography whichever photography and bird photography you can say is the biggest mess anybody would can create because of a lot of problems which comes along with the bird itself <laughs> right so let's say art light and composition you see something you love that and now you want to make a photograph so you saw a bird you saw a setting which is basically i'm talking about where the bird is sitting right now you want to make that photograph so you have that image in your mind you have to bring it to the reality which is exposure which is science right if you are too good in art in the sense visually you can see this is the photograph i want you do not have science you do not know how to make that exposure now though you are not yet making an exposure you can actually bridge the gap you know if you have the vision if you know exactly what you want to do as a get as an output you can actually learn the science to make the art so never forget the fact that you are learning the science to make an art not that the other way that's the crucial point if you have to take out take away from my discussion or even if you come to my workshop we were as was there no matter how you see no matter how you debate no matter how you come <laughs> this is the truth and this is the only reality photography is art whether it is bird photograph any photograph it's art it's basically what you see in your mind you want to put it on to the picture and the science is helping you to get the picture that's that's how it is you should always look at it that way. the moment you look at it that way everything becomes simple because science you can basically bridge the gap bridging the gap is pretty easy and when you are bridging the gap if you ask okay i want to get this kind of an exposure how do i get that's a different way of doing it compared to what setting should i use right what should i what setting should i use what do you mean by exposure so if you start from just the science and only know the science it's basically like you know how to uh, make a sentence perfectly grammatically perfect sentence in english language but you do not know how to convey your idea that's the whole point right 
if you know how to convey your idea even if you do not know english properly you can actually convey it very well we have seen it all over the world and we can see it every single day this is no different so remember that first and foremost thing you should always do is what kind of a photograph do i want what makes good photograph what kind of photograph do i like then see and then bridge the gap and then see how i can make an exposure like this how i can use the science in order to make the art the moment you start thinking like this your photographs will start to become better and better without you realizing it and your photography itself will become pretty nice and pretty you know kind of a happy moment rather than frustrating moment i know how much for photographers are frustrated in their life i was frustrated i am frustrated in the field so many times but at the end of the day what makes us go over and over again what makes us push over and over again and try to get a photograph is because we have a vision in our mind we want to get it that's about it so that's why both art and science are necessary they are very much required there is no doubt about it not always about it but if it is driven by the art driven by the vision because it's a visual art right you will have a better picture you will have a better feeling of photography so that's what we are going to talk about today and i'll just you know marry them and tell you how to go about it i'll tell you about five uh, seven steps for seven factors if you follow these top seven factors i'm telling you i am usually i usually brag and i usually say things like very cutthroat and i'm telling you now also though i do not know you guys very well and you do not know me very well so if you follow these seven factors starting today your bird photographs will be much 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 better than majority of the photographs which you see that is for sure just follow these seven factors try like right? the most important thing is try and experiment and see if these factors are working and i am sure at least four to five factors you will know and many of you may not know all seven factors if you know it it's kind of a revision right so let's see all these seven factors if you do not know it probably it's a best way to start for the right place to start so the first one <laughs> so it's it's kind of everybody knows very very few people follow that's what i have seen in uh, majority of bird sanctuaries when i go and i speak to people i see that they have plenty of experience several years of experience i have students who have come all the way from canada us and all over india they will have some of them have 50 years of experience and they are like 70 75 80 years old and they still didn't grasp the first and foremost thing which makes photograph which is light and since we are talking about bird photography we got to always work with front light as the first thing. so whatever i'm saying here first thing which i want to tell you before you basically think that oh he's talking about something very stupid and very silly and very very you know uh, kind of known factor before you do that what i'm saying is if you if you are doing it you know it so you just start doing it or keep doing it if you do not know it then it's better to know it if you know it and if you are not doing it that is where your problem is the first and foremost is the front light you just whenever you go to the field the first thing you do is where is the sun and i'm assuming you are going to the field in the early morning and the late evening time wherein basically we are talking about up to 9 o'clock in, in india if outside you can shoot for a very long time or if you are in the northern part of india you can shoot up to 11 o'clock also sometimes 12 o'clock also bharatpur we shoot all day along depending on which season you are in generally speaking when the sun is at a lower angle that's the that's the whole point right it's not at the top it's kind of in a lower angle that's where you want to shoot and whenever he is in the lower uh, angle lower uh, and basically is nearer to the horizon what you want to do is you want to keep him to your back that's all is the first thing you have to do don't look at the bird the biggest issue is you go behind the bird no you first look at the light where is the light right keep the light behind you keep the sun behind you now you look for the bird and you know in the very beginning i'm telling you so what's the biggest complaint which all bird photographers have can any of you tell me what is the biggest the number one complaint of a bird photographer what is it 
Anybody? Not enough light. <laughs> <laughs> no. Light, see, you go to the right place, you have light. So no, not that. <laughs> Darkness. No. Freezing action. So, sorry, say it again. I mean, not able to freeze action. Okay, no. That's an issue, but no, not the biggest. The most frustrating thing. Light on the eyes. No. Most not, frustrating not, thing about bird photography. <laughs> say, say it again. Getting the required action from the bird. <laughs> Expected close, action. Close, close, yes. <laughs> there okay. is always something, you know, coming in between. Oh, no. Okay, I'll tell you the BS issue. Sir, focus, focus issues. Focusing issues. No. Um, birds do not listen to us. That's the biggest issue. Birds are always moving. They are not standing still. And they give us the toughest time ever, right? So even the wildlife photographers, the movement of those wildlife is so, so low. Basically, I'm talking about mammals. Right? Birds are the only ones who do not want to sit at one place do not want to give us a little bit of a time to focus on the eye properly, right? They are never still. That's our biggest issue, right? That's the biggest frustration bird photographers have. Correct, right? So that, if you look at it in a different way, then that's a boon. That's, that's basically a bane for all the photographers. That's what normally we think, but it's a boon. Why is it a boon? Because since the bird moves, if you are prepared properly, the bird will eventually move and you can actually wait for the bird to move to a place where you want it and take the photo there. Actually, my success lies in that particular sentence, if you understood it. But say, let's take this sun example, okay? Now, the bird is on this side, sun is also on the same side. Now you will ask me, Pratap, how do I do it, basically? I cannot turn the sun, yes, of course you cannot turn. You can move, but sometimes you may not be able to move. So what do you do? You wait. You basically do not take the photograph unless you're taking backlight photographs. That's a different thing. But majority of your photographs are front lit. You wait for the bird. Bird is anyway going to go somewhere. He's, going, he's not going to sit there forever unless it's a night shower or a, you know, owl. But majority of the birds, they're going to fly at some point in time. So what you want to do is you want to go behind the birds who are going to give you better pose rather than sticking to one bird and basically getting frustrated that that bird is not moving, that bird is not giving me the right pose and all these things, which I normally and naturally hear from all the people. So first thing is, this is, though it's a bane that birds are always moving, it's basically, if you ask me, it's a boon that birds are always moving, not unlike landscape photographers. They're always moving, which essentially means that you have plenty of possibilities. The only thing is you need to be ready for such possibilities and you need to just change your mindset and say, yes, the best thing is birds are moving and he is going to move. I'll just wait for him or her to move to a specific location and I'll take a photograph. That's the first thing. You do it and you will then start to see that you are a changed photographer altogether. Okay? So wait for the front leg, no matter what. Unless you're shooting back leg, just position yourself first, depending on where the sun is. And then look for the bird in that area. Okay. If you follow all my seven points, you will come to know it's the easiest thing to do. Okay, one of the five of the most uh, advantageous things which you get out because of the front light is one is the exposure, the biggest issue of all the bird photographers. The exposure. If you look at bird photographs, the first thing I say is exposure is wrong, and majority of the times exposure is wrong. Okay, you can see it somewhere or the other something is a problem, and the reason I have put carburant here out of all the birds is the toughest one to get the exposure. And you can see the exposure on the bird. And it's because of the front light, because of the soft light, we're getting this kind of an exposure, right? And if you can get the right exposure on the black bird like this, you will get right exposure in, on all the birds. And egret is just the reverse. Either the egret or the carbonate, or in my opinion, you nail the exposure on the carbonate, on the egret, you have nailed everything else. These are white and black, and the rainbow colors are yours. Okay? Then the snappier out of focus. Basically, out of focus is another biggest issue which everybody kind of gets frustrated about. Even the ones who are using prime lens, even the ones who are using zoom lens, no matter what you use, out of focus is going to give you a problem unless you are currently using the 
best of the breed where out of focus has become like you know <laughs> it's a no brainer now so yes if you are using the mirrorless cameras and you are using the animal if if you are basically you just got a boon from these manufacturers where in out of focus is working like charm it, otherwise also it's always good to know that out of focus requires contrast contrast is the biggest thing for out of focus it works on contrast and your eyes themselves work on contrast so if you have a front light basically because the bird is going to be closer to you background is going to be farther from you the difference between the light falling and reflecting off of the bird versus the background is going to be phenomenally different and it is going to be there will be a high contrast between the two because there is a good contrast out of focus will be able to focus on the bird much quicker so you have to help the out of focus we cannot quarrel with it right we need to understand how it works and work with that then you have faster shutter speed, speed biggest <laughs> after the out of focus or before that just depending on whatever it is so because the light is falling really well on the bird you will easily get 1 by 1000 per second 1 by 2000 per second and nowadays the cameras are so good that isos you can bump up 400 800 1600 somebody some people will shoot at 10000 also i have shot it nowadays only just the last trip <laughs> which i never would do it but anyway so shutter speed which is the biggest thing for birds in flight for instance they are getting very fast shutter speed then less noise in ir so most of the people do not know i do not know how many of you know it see the key is you just don't go blindly with iso iso will get noise so 400 iso will be noisier 800 iso will be noisier than the 400 iso yes it's all true but if you shoot night picture like any photograph in the night you take you take the iso 100 the base iso it's, it's full of noise right so the noise is also dependent on the light which you, which you are gathering so if the light and the noise is predominantly there in the shadow region or on the uniform region these two places is where it really resides and if the light is very good if it is front light and the entire bird is getting whatever is on your side is getting lit properly you don't have to worry too much you can actually shoot with higher is yes 400 800 1600 depending on what camera you are using you can actually simply shoot with the higher iso getting higher shutter speeds okay right? and still you can see that the noise is not so high very very less even if it is if even if it's, the noise is there it's generally there in the background which you can actually take it out very easily so remember that that's a very important factor and catch light somebody said it so <laughs> it's a given it's always there you don't have to really think about it even in the birds and birds in flight you will get catched you don't have to worry about it. so this one i have already taken some 15 minutes to say about just front light and the benefits of front light so you can see that majority of bird photography is put in one point called front light. you do this from tomorrow you will start seeing better results whatever you are getting from uh, whatever you are getting now right so that's a very important point that's why i put power range so that you understand how crucial it becomes to have front light and also follow certain things which I'm going to talk about in the next slides. The second one is the background. <laughs> Not many people talk about it, but for me, this is the key and it's background which makes the picture. Always remember that. You, if you have to remember one line and you have to always you know, chant the mantra, you just chant this mantra. Background makes the picture. No matter where you see, no matter how you see, unless it's a landscape, if you are taking anything kind of a portrait, even birds, most often we are taking kind of portraits are where we are going to get most of the things out of focus and things like that. So it, no matter what it is, if there is one subject like a bird or a mammal or a person or anything of that sort, flower, it's the background which makes the picture, not the bird, remember that. You can put the best bird in the world, probably since we are all in India, our national bird peacock being the most beautiful one. You put it in a bad background, it will look very bad. The picture will not be good. You may say, yeah, peacock, very nice and all these things. Even if it basically opens up all these wings, it's going to be useless picture if the background is so clumsy, right? You put just a normal portrait of a peacock with a beautiful background. It will shine, basically. It will work really well. It's a blue, it has a blue um, upper body, right? You take a warm color and put it against it. It will look beautiful. It will just change the way the picture looks. Look at the flamingo here. 
it's a very different kind of a feel and it's in my opinion it looks like indian flags <laughs> so in a very you know you can actually just debate it and make it out as an indian flag so this is a very common picture there is nothing really great about the picture itself that's just a flamingo and you get lot of flamingo flamingos whenever you go to say gujarat or, uh, probably in gujarat and probably in mumbai think so if it was only about flaming flamingo there is no not much of a picture over it right it's also about everything else other than flamingo right that's what is making picture and that's what is making this picture unique it's a flamingo picture yes but it's a unique picture because it has different elements so whenever you are looking at a bird your background has to help to enhance the bird the most important thing it is it's the, whether it's bird flower person mammal whatever it is remember that the moment you choose a subject forget about the subject think about the background what is there in the background because suppose this thing whatever i have written two background always remember background makes the picture if i made it as white could you have seen it no white on white nobody can see but it's all there you cannot see if i put yellow if i put something else you may not see it as good as if it was black it's the highest contrast which i am giving that is why you are able to see it that's why you can actually read what is there so same applies for your picture also the moment you uh, find out okay this is the bird i'm going to take and this is front light the next thing is background let me find out a background which is going to make it better it's, it has to enhance it has to make it more viable it has to make it more legit and also it has to make it more beautiful background has so much power that you cannot really understand it unless and until you do it in the field you got to do it so along with the light when you go back go tomorrow along with the front light you remember the background if you remember these two your pictures will be really really good i'll tell you you cannot believe that with only these two you can actually make much better pictures so remember this all the times background makes the picture the third one is the eye level which i am assuming everybody who has done bird photography at some point in time knows that it has to be eye level because birds are so small if you take it from your level it will never look good and if you want to look see the first thing is if you want to make your photograph look professional right it looks like it's a professionally shot photo with a prime lens and big gears and other things whatever gear you have even if you have 7300 i was just hearing people saying about 7300 200 whatever it is 100 500 400 150 600 73 300 any lens you have just lie down flat on the ground on your tummy okay lie down take a picture and see how it comes it will naturally throw everything out of focus in the background because the moment you sit you know lie down your background is going to go too far especially in the, in the ground birds or the sea birds or all these show, show birds and the other places so water birds so try that okay i know not everybody can do it because of physical issues and other things if there is physical issue then forget about it you basically sit if you can at least sit sit and take the photograph and there is another thing which i just tell you just for sake of completion if you cannot lie down on the ground for whatever reason then nowadays you are all getting tilted tiltable screens right you can actually tilt it so you put the camera down you have a tripod which can go flat or you have a bean bag or whatever you want to put it you put the camera on that one open the tiltable screen look at it put a live view and then take a picture one picture that's all i'm asking just take one picture of a bird which is going to you know which is going to give you that, that kind of a chance don't go behind these ones these ones run like anything if you do not have so much of experience for instance and like you no you cannot take such a picture very very difficult you can but very very difficult but some other birds maybe great my favorite you will always be there for you <laughs> and the gray run all these ones and cattle like this they are all so uh, good for you right they are all kind of meditating and not moving at all like rocks and that is your chance to take the front light to take the best background to take the eye level and see how it works and only when you see it how it works is when you will start to you know uh, appreciate as to why it is good why it is necessary to take the eye level shot
the fourth yeah this is where we break it and uh, normally i just break all the things which which are kind of followed by majority of the photographers so you keep it in the center whenever you are taking birds in flight or birds in action just keep the bird in the center forget about composition right so <laughs> i have written a book on composition where you can have 30 different composition just for bird photography and i truly care about composition but all said and done that nobody cares how much trouble you took in the field to get the composition right and how many photographs you missed so if you are ready for that kind of a challenge you do it because i have done it i have done it for a very very long time but suppose you are more interested in getting the picture and making the composition at the end because if you are a true artist if you get into this kind of a, you know photographer true photographer's role of uh, point of view it doesn't really matter whether you took the bird photographs which are there in the center and then you cropped it or whether you took it in the field it's only about you if whether you feel satisfied that you did it that way or this way. because the viewer at the end of the day whom you are showing for him or her what they see on the pic, on the screen is what is important and on the screen if it is very good and post processing i don't touch it now i don't touch upon it post processing don't forget that it's one of the tool to make a photograph never consider post processing as an afterthought as most of the people think about post processing is not an afterthought it's part of making a photograph right so just like the way you are using a different lens different camera different settings to get a different effect post processing is also a tool to do the same thing not to change around but it's also part of your photography part of your art okay utilize it and make better pictures okay so unless you are confident unless you are very good in moving the order focus points getting the framing right even for the birds in flight like this where everything is happening so quick you keep it in center don't worry about anybody no whatever the other will say oh he's keeping everything in center do it i am doing it <laughs> after 9 10 years of doing everything perfectly well in the field not to showcase not to tell others others that i did it in the field i never do it i did it because i wanted to do it but today you ask me i keep everything in center and shoot it that's about it. then i compose it later i do not really care that's what happens to all the photographers who go who reach certain levels and then then they will see that those are all stupidity basically it's the same stupidity which manual mode most of the people do with manual mode i know vivek will be smiling at this point in time so i am not going to cover that here okay so it doesn't really matter if anybody is sticking to the manual mode and thinking that yes i am a very good photographer because i shoot in manual mode forget about it nobody cares nobody gives a damn what kind of a setting did you use whether you use manual mode and all this things they care about your photo there that's the art just think about art all the times think about making good photo there. that's what is should be in your mind all the times not about oh i did manual mode i did this f stop that f stop no big cares basically i am telling you out of my 10 years of experience and just it's not a bragging i'm just telling you so that you know okay that way back 10 years back or 11 11 years back when i took the photograph i started with manual mode because i already knew how to use manual mode because i did two years of study visualizing things not having a camera in my hand okay i'm very good at visualizing and i basically did photography for almost 5 years yeah first 5 years or 6 years of my photography was all manual mode you do not believe that i was a pure manual mode guy with bird photography all the bird photographs i have taken was with manual mode this one which you are seeing is manual not manual mode this is an aperture priority mode yes i did it so what it didn't change any anything today i use aperture priority today i use manual mode with auto iso i do not really care basically you shouldn't care about what mode you are using you should only use what is convenient to you to get a photograph what you want that is why keeping art always in your mind is important science is helping to get the art don't make science itself so big that you will forget about art now that's the situation today in photography world okay just keep that in mind and make sure that you get the picture first start getting the picture and start having the happiness which it gives that yes i got that moment this this is what i was visualizing this is what i was trying to get go there okay try to be very faithful and honest with yourself nobody cares right you should care first and then 
the others will care. So that's your fourth point to make it very simple for you. The fifth is the birds in flight. I did not want to keep it this way, but anyway, since the majority of you or whoever is in bird photography are kind of very keen on getting the right birds in flight shots. So there is a rule of thumb, which I've followed, which I've always followed and I basically formulated this as a rule of thumb is basically first to track. The most important thing in birds in flight is tracking the bird. The majority of the times what happens, the bird is flying, and it's already flying past you. And that's when you take your camera and then focus and click. And you took 20, 100 based on what camera you're using. Then you say, oh, no, it's all, it's all gone. It's all rubbish. And today, probably because you are either using Nikon Z9 or Canon R3, R5 or Sony A9 and things like that. Yes, even if you take it like this, you may still get a sharper picture, but you will not get a good picture. You know, that. remember that always. Even if you get a good picture, what's the point? You did not, you just pointed and shoot, right? You pointed and shot. And that's a lucky picture, probably, whatever you get. So you plan for it. You basically track the bird. When I say tracking, what you need to do is, if you want to take a bird photograph, birds in flight photo, the bird which is more important for you is the one which is far, either to the left or to the right or to the back. Okay, it's coming towards you or coming from left to right or right to left. You first identify a bird which is already far from you. Then you start tracking that fellow. It's a very important thing. You first track him. Okay, first get aligned with him. Whatever the pace he's going in, you just align yourself properly. Keep him in the center. Then the next thing is focus, which you do not have to do anything. The camera will do, but as long as you keep it properly and as long as you're tracking it properly, camera will automatically focus. And through the viewfinder, you need to see that it is focused properly. And you can only do it with all these things happening so quickly. And I'm talking about bird photography. And you can actually see that it is getting focused if you did track from a long distance, because it takes longer time to come to you. A few seconds I'm talking about, but still, you can actually see it's in focus. Now you wait. Why do you wait? You wait until the bird comes to a place or a particular plane where you have a better background. You see, background makes the picture. It doesn't matter whether it's a flight photograph or whatever photograph you're taking. It has to be always kept in mind. Even for the flight photography to work, your background has to be nice. So you wait for the background. And through the viewfinder, you are already tracking and you have seen that it is in focus just when the background comes into play start clicking. That's what is track, focus, wait and shoot. And this photograph and all, almost all my photographs are done with the same thing. Track, focus, wait, shoot. And that's how I've always done. And this photograph is also the same way. I'm shooting like this. And they're flying in. I could have taken, see, you can always take 100 photographs and pick this one, this one photograph, which is looking good. That's one way of doing it. But I believe in taking the right photograph at the right moment. Okay, so you wait, you just wait, they're all, they're flying by. Okay, how do you, how do I know, okay, this is a background. That is where it comes. First, when you go there and when you stand and say, correct light, whatever you are waiting for, and then you check the background, which is a good background in whatever you are seeing, which is a good background. So now you have set the light, you have set the good background, wait for the bird. You see, if you follow this methodology, you should be happy that birds are always moving because they're coming. One way or the other, one day or the other, they will come. So you just wait. And the moment you, they come, you have a best photograph. So when I took this photograph also, so it's a very simple photograph of two birds coming in. So the background is very crucial to me. And that is why I even converted it into, into black and white because there is a lot of texture in the background which takes more prominence here, right? Otherwise, the entire sky was blue. Only at a particular point, there was a patch of clouds. So. If you, here I'll tell you one simple thing. See, this photograph makes me very happy. For you, it may be a very simple photograph or probably kind of a possible photograph and nobody might care if you put it in a competition. Doesn't matter, remember that. Doesn't matter. You are not taking it for competition. Never take it for competition. I'm sorry, you guys have done competition. <laughs> Forget about competition, right? There are zillions of photographers, zillions of photographs. Forget about all those things. Does it make you happy? Take a photograph which makes you happy first. Then let us think about competition. 
right? Whenever you look at it, you should see, yeah, this is what I did. And when you plan and shoot like this, you will remember, this is exactly how I did it. And that's the beauty of photography. That's the art. It's, it comes from the heart. <laughs> okay. Though there is science involved. Right? Okay. So uh, I'll just make it a little quick. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little late. So be prepared. I cannot emphasize enough of this particular word called preparation. Okay, especially in bird photography. See, landscape photographers also prepare a lot. Everybody has to prepare, but bird photography, even if you prepare the best, still you have to wait for that luck factor. And still you have to pray God, even if you do not pray God, probably you pray somebody saying that, pray it to the bird itself saying that, please come. Okay, this photograph uh, of a peacock coming on <laughs> with uh, sun as a uh, sun disk in the background, was the toughest photograph I have ever taken. Okay, I stayed. I went to the same place, the Sunrise Point in Bharatpur. Now it is famous, but there is no. Unfortunately, there is no tree, so you cannot take any sunrise photograph here. But nowadays, it has become too easy for anybody to get a sunrise photograph. When I was taking it back six years ago, there was only this particular tree where the peacocks will come. And sun now, obviously, you know, he's not going to cooperate with you. Bird is not going to cooperate with you. But there were only moments, I, I truly mean moments, like only a few seconds of time when everything will come together and you take one photograph. And for seven days, I stand there one and a half hours, two hours in the cold, having very tough time, wherein I could have gone inside the Bharat Bhagavad Sanctuary to take photographs and nice photographs you get inside the sanctuary. But I was standing in between the gate one and gate two. I don't know how many people know it. With, before, uh, before the gate two, in the stretch where nothing is there, was this tree. So everybody who goes there for those seven days, every single one had asked this particular cycle rickshaw guy, says, what is this guy doing here all alone? So they'll say, he's just waiting for that peacock. He's just waiting for the peacock. Some guys are mad. I've heard all these things while waiting for such an opportunity. <laughs> Finally, I get it. And from next season onwards, it has become Sunrise Point. And it was very famous as Sunrise Point. And every, even the tourists were stopping to see the Sunrise Point. Okay. But this was one of the toughest. But I prepared so very well to get this photograph that I was... I was standing on the rickshaw with my tripod with a 600 mm uh, F4 and just asking our helpers, basically our cycle rickshaw people, two, three people were there and asking them, just one inch here, just one inch this side. Once again, it stops, it stops. It was a madness. <laughs> Somebody would have, should have autographed, or videographed that. It was the madness which I had on that day, going back and forth on all these things and got this particular shot. The first shot was where the leg was not. He, he did not lift, uh, lift the leg. The second shot is where he lifts the leg and goes. So I took probably three, four shots. That's about it. And there is a moment which I like the most. And the most important thing for me was to get that face and properly with the sand disc. Okay. And also not to mention the composition was set. I knew this is the composition I want. So this is a full frame 600 millimeter composition. Not even a millimeter was cut. Okay, so th this is what you can do with preparation. And when you prepare, you are basically visualizing. You are visualizing. Okay, these these things will come. Tree is anyway not moving. Sun is anyway going to come in the same place. Bird is the only thing which you do not know where it will land, when it will land. You do not know. Just make whatever is in your capacity, whatever you can do. Test exposure. Do everything. Keep the settings ready, perfectly ready with everything. Wait for it. Wait for the luck to happen and it comes and it happens, then you have a photo. And that is the photo you will always talk about. I'm talking about it after six years also. <laughs> so I'm never tired of talking. Probably are tired of hearing. If you, my, friend, my students are probably tired of hearing, but I never get tired of talking. So these are moments which we cherish, right? So be prepared. Do things like this, which will give you a lot more satisfaction than getting a perfectly sharp photo zoom in 200%, 300% and say, yeah, this is a sharp photo. Nobody cares. I'm telling you, I don't care. And all the viewers wouldn't care ever. Okay. Only photographer will care because he wants to know what settings you have missed. <laughs> so unfortunate, yeah, but the truth. So hotspots, okay. So I say, say this all the times. So if you want to get the best photographs, 
you follow these seven steps, the best photographs. And if you want to follow only one from my side, go to the hotspot, okay? Just make it a point that if you want to get the good pictures of the birds, you better go to where the birds are in abundance and where there are opportunities, where there are plenty of opportunities for you to try out everything I said. You should be able to have a bird which is cooperative. You should be able to have a repetition of the action so that you can take a photograph. You should be able to track, you should be able to focus, you should be able to get the right background, you should be able to get the light either from the back or from the front, whatever is your choice, right? So all these things which I've told about is possible when you go to the hotspot, okay? If you run behind one bird in your backyard, don't expect yourself to get better for them. So I've gotten it, but that's not the good way to do. That will basically frustrate you at some point in time. So unless you have the best background, best backyard, go to the birding hotspot and take three days to four days. Kind of. Go alone, that's the best. Don't go with anybody else because you guys will copy the settings, which is my biggest uh, complaint about photographs. Never copy the settings, forget about that. Just see what you want to get. Take it. So you are not getting it. Change it. Take it. Change it. Take it. You have nothing to lose. You are not losing even a single rupee while you are taking hundreds of photographs or thousands of photographs. Just take one bird, Egret. He's going to cooperate with you. Go to Bharatpur. Go to Egret. He will stay there for four hours or maybe the full day. Take a best photograph of one best photograph of Egret. More than enough. You will learn a lot than anybody else who has learned through everything else. So that's my suggestion to you. Hot spot always at least once or twice a year. I know many of you are going almost monthly or twice, but twice. But whenever you go there, if you go to the hotspot, never forget my six points. Then you will get best photographs. <laughs> so uh, that's how I am trapping you. Okay, so um, my photographs, I have only four or five photographs. So I'm hoping I can go with them. I'll take some five, six minutes. Is it okay? Can I go through my photographs before going to the question and answer? Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, this photograph, what do you think? Um, can you guess the equipment which I've used? Just take a wild guess of... Uh... Mobile? No, no, <laughs> it would have been good. Maybe today's mobile, I can take it, yeah. <laughs> so... Any guesses? Point and shoot. No, it, it was taken in the DSLR only, but what lens I would have used here? Can you guess? Yeah? Okay, so just because of the time. So I used the kit lens 18.55 with my D60, which was having 3.5 frames per second. Okay, so we are talking about today, we have the best equipment. That day I was shooting 11 years ago with my D60, which was the entry level camera with a 3.5 FPS, which will go chuck, 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 even if you put uh, bursts photographs. And then 1855 kit lens is what I'm using, okay? And this is one of my most favorite photographs. And one of the first photographs I've taken and the most favorite photographs. This happened because of a simple thing called observation which I see a lot of people lacking. Observation is the most important thing. When you go to the field, spend time. When you go to hotspots, basically you can spend a lot of time looking at the bird. Don't read. Try not to read. This is visual. Try don't, don't, don't make it like a study and make it so complicated. I see a lot of people talking so complicated things in the field also. But I really feel pity about all those people. <laughs> so it's so simple. It's a visual thing. You don't have to know so many things. And even if you... Learn about the seagull bird. They're all different. We are all different as humans. You can, you can say, okay, I learned everything about human. I know how they're going to behave. No, Pratap will behave very differently than Vivek and all other people. Birds are also different, okay? So just spend time, go there, learn. I never learned anything about any bird and I do not know almost all the birds' names. Whichever I know are the birds which have taken the photograph. And I have normally known the photographs after I have taken the birds. So I'm very... Uh, bad guy in those things. I'm not a bird watcher, I'm a bird photographer. So here, I was just watching the seagull and it was just repeating. I saw that it was repetitive and they were coming to this particular lab for whatever reason, there were many labs. So they were also 
uh, going to different lamps, but I figured out this is a better lamp. And I just went down, waited for the bird. I set things up. I said, okay, this is the frame. Basically, I couldn't have a lot of framing this thing because it was 55 mm. Everything was okay. I just waited for the seagull to come in. That's about it. And as soon as it came, and as it was coming inside the frame is when I started clicking because I had only three frames in a second. Okay, and I was so fortunate that I got this frame with the backlight of the seagull coming in. And I, you can also see it's web food basically, right? So yes, with any camera, with any lens, you can take the photograph. So if you are basically seeing that, okay, I only have 18-200 lens I had for a very long time or 73. Nowadays, everybody has up to 400 and more than that. But suppose you say, no, I have only small lens and other things. You know what you should do? You should pick the birds which suits this lens. Just do like that. Just the way I said art, then science, like that. This is what I have. This is what I can take. I will choose the birds based on that. Never go around, never go in a different way. Oh, I saw the bird, I will take it. Now I get frustrated. I go crop. Oh, nothing is coming. And don't go with those things. Whatever is your lens, with that, you can get the best shots. Just go in search of those birds. And then take only those birds. Because what you are taking is photograph. Your photograph can be the best. Any, any bird can give you the best photographs. If you care about the light, the composition, the way you are taking it, the action, all these things. So never forget that. Okay, never get bogged down by, oh, I only have this one, this guy has prime lens and all this. Thing. No, that's all something not to be worried about at all, I'm telling you. Okay. So this one, <laughs> so this was an award-winning uh, photograph uh, of a green uh, heron. This is just opposite to the way I've told you with the seventh point that you should go to the hotspot. This was taken in the backyard, <laughs> okay? But there was a problem that I didn't have any hotspot to go to and I was in US and I was in Chicago where it was a suburb. And within our apartment complex, there were two ponds. And uh, in these two ponds, we had uh, mallard ducks, the geese, and then one green heron and one blue heron, okay? And um, one, uh, not blue, uh, yeah, blue heron, that's a great blue heron. One, uh, and one kingfisher, the belted kingfisher. These were the People were there, the birds were there. I will go every morning there uh, for almost all one year I was there. So I was just, I'll take my camera, go there and work with the same birds and watch the same birds. I was kind of little mad and I was basically mad about this green heron because this guy would always be there in the marsh. And this is, this is what you're saying is a railing and there was a bridge on the pond and the pond was three feet below the bridge and that is where at the edge was this green error. I would just curse him every single day, saying that, why don't you come out? Why don't you come out? Literally, I was so mad. And usually when we are there in the field, all alone, we behave madly. That's why you should go alone. You can basically talk to yourself, get frustrated. Nobody knows. Okay, that's a beautiful thing, I'll tell you. So that's, that's where the madness develops. That's where you basically start developing a new way of looking at things. That's a very important thing. So here, this particular photograph of the green heron one day that too that too you do not believe it's it looks like a fairy tale that this guy decides to come out of that place when i have my 300 mm f2.8 lens it was only kind of a week so week old i think at that time that was my first prime lens and a 300 mm f2.8 very heavy one and i have a d7100 uh, with it i'm sitting on i'm always sitting on the um, what did they say the bridge the floor of the bridge because I wanted a eye level as much as possible. I would take a eye level shot of a blue heron. That's where I usually would take because this guy would never allow me to take a photograph. That day, another green heron comes for some reason, and probably that was a breeding season or something. Then my guy, <laughs> this one, he comes out okay to chase that particular uh, guy away, and he comes out and stops on the rail. I am sitting on the ground. I am giving you back backstory of this one. Sorry for taking time, but I cannot stop it. So I'm sitting on the ground. It's on the top, three feet away, above, above from me. Now, for the first time he has come out, what do I do? Right? I have to get up and I have to take the eye level because that's the only way I can do it. So the first thing is I take the photograph while I'm sitting. Bad photo, I know, but I take it because he was there outside. 
then i sit up and take a photograph because when i sat up i was almost kind of i live a little bit lower than i he still there i couldn't believe that he is still there then i slowly holding my breath come out i mean i got up i am 6 1 basically i am very very tall for the very very short word <laughs> so i did not want it to basically uh, make him aware of me basically they are very skittish so i i was kind of bending and just came out and then take the shot the first thing is you take the shot first you know that it's not the best shot but you take it and then i check the exposure and make sure that everything is fine he is still there for whatever reason he is still there the only day where he really cooperated then i take put my camera on the railing to get the support because it's a 300 mm get the support 300 mm f2.8 you would have all seen it has this bigger lens this bigger glass and if the light reflects from that most of the birds will just be scared to look at that it's very big eye and he decides to come towards me. <laughs> so he takes 10 step towards me looking at the lens he's just staring at the lens i have all the photographs so basically i take the photograph he's coming like this he's basically putting his leg like this very odd odd kind of the steps he takes comes in his he stands two more steps i'm telling you two more steps it would have been out of focus he didn't take two more steps fortunately i was there he stood there for a second few seconds probably i took the photograph of him and it's a 300 mm f2.8 i cannot change anything so i just was in a horizontal position then he bends just like this birds <laughs> he bends i go to tick 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 that's all i know i go to tick 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 then it's a 7100 so it it just finishes off before i even take the like four or five shots just finishes off bird is not there he is there in the water Okay, I take the picture of the picture of him coming out with the fish also, and it was useless uh, because I was shooting like this. Then I think my heart is racing when I basically look at this picture and I know this is the picture. <laughs> and yes, you can see acrobatic face and you can uh, see that it's kind of defying the gravity by coming like this and staying there for a second before diving down. So this this was my most favorite, and it is also following the same front light. it's because of the front light it's easiest for doing all this uh, aspects okay so if you are prepared and if you know what you are doing and if you wait for a very long time like 6 months one year <laughs> depends uh, you will be lucky one day or the other so two more photos i have so this is the favorite i'm saying so many favorites because i'm only showing the favorite ones and um, this is taken with 70 300 mm d 300s uh, which was rented at that time both were rented because i had a 18 200 and it was in rangantittu uh, this story is a very long story probably i don't want to bore you guys but one thing i want to tell you is this picture which i took i am trying to get the same picture from past 10 years i am not able to repeat it so i have taken thousands and thousands literally thousands of photographs of egrets i love the bird but nothing close to this particular uh, thing this happened because the bird was flying this way and i was tracking the bird and suddenly took a u turn for whatever reason it took a u turn and i take the photographs just then i just intuitively i press the shutter he turns that's why that spread of wings are there and he comes in okay this was selected for magazine also Anyway, so yeah this is my last photograph and uh, i took this photograph and you can actually debate so <laughs> of the branches coming all over the place don't worry about those things uh, i wanted it to be like this and i've kept it like this this is the composition which was done and it's not changed it's the exact composition which was done with 600 mm so this tree is not there now in bharatpur so this was the only photograph for this is probably the only photograph of a peacock in this particular tree so it's a million dollar photograph nobody wants to buy it but yeah so it's an repeatable thing and a tree which you see as c it is forming a c shape right it's basically not like that <laughs> the tree was just like this just very odd tree it was very odd tree and uh, at some point when i looked back while i was going into the bharatpur bird sanctuary this was at the very first gate when i looked back i could actually see a c shape of this one. one day and one peacock this peacock used to always roost in this particular place 
okay in the morning we will see but the light was opposite and i would not wait for taking a photograph because the background was always used to be just bland sky so it was useless for me to take a photograph and the, in the evening i never saw this bird so it used to come very late at night and probably would always stay in the morning okay so one day while while we take the sunset photograph the sunset was not very good that day because of the clouds and uh, we just left a little bit early like 10 minutes earlier so i think and the sky started getting pinkish it, it just turns pinkish you with the twilight as i was coming out basically it's a dusk right not twilight so that's so i was coming out and then i said to gabruji who is my cycle rickshaw shopper sir all the times told him gabruji can we go to that place gate number 1 fast so he he is kind of 70 plus years old and he says sir hold your camera tightly because that road was so bad and even today it is bad at that time it was very very bad and it is so bumpy and i'm having the tripod and on top of it i am having the 600 mm so i hold it tight and say you go as fast as you could he we just go so fast screaming all through saying that give me give us the place give us the place give us the place and then i we go and as we cross the second gate from the second gate i can see 500 meters now it's almost like 750 meters i think when i was around 500 meters i can see there is the bird and there is the sky which is almost going off right the dusk is almost turning off then i said fast then while we are going on the cycle rickshaw get like this and i take a test exposure and i make sure that it is correct and we stop i don't even go down i said we just stop i'll take it from the rickshaw normally i don't do it with all three legs like this not even spread across so it's kind of wobbly but i know what i want i take three photographs the fourth photograph you don't believe you just cannot believe it is true fourth photograph it was white it was basically brown the entire thing turned this color just bland sky i have taken that photograph just to show it some some day when it becomes a million dollar photograph whatever <laughs> so some day i will show to compare saying that how important it is for you to get be prepared for certain things and preparation really pays off and you never know how things will turn out to be you never know so it's always good to be watchful in the field be observant see always try to think oh if this was like this it would have been good if that part was done this one this would have been good if you keep thinking on these lines on the art of art set of thing rather than oh sharpen 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 setting setting settings you will see that you will start to love it you will start to see that it's a beautiful thing to photograph and then science will come it will pick up on so <laughs> that's it uh, this is my free book you can go to my blog and then download this this is about sharp images so settings so if you are keen on sharp and settings please go there and i have written everything there and that's it from my side so this is my mail id pratapdikatgmail.com you can uh, connect with me or you basically subscribe to my blog which is naturephotographysimplified.com and uh, we can take it from there so that's about it from my side i, sh- I shall stop sharing and